today we have the infamous Janina. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys? It's your girl Janina here with Colleen Witt and we are eating while broke and making yes. cabbage soup. I'm yes. super excited. And I'm super hungry so I didn't see any meat in this menu, in this ingredients or anything but I'm still hungry and I can't wait for you to feed me. Oh it's gonna be great. So what ingredients did you bring? So here I have celery, mm -hmm. carrots, bell peppers, onions, lemons, parsley, and cabbage, and then the vegetable broth. Wow, so this, for a broke dish, this has a lot of moving parts, which oh, means yeah. it's gonna taste great. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, and and just so you guys know that are listening and watching, Janina already started, she, uh, she has a little secret helper that came <laughs> nice in before <laughs> and uh, helped already pre-start the broth so you guys mm -hmm. won't be here too long or we won't starve to death while we're talking and catching up. But so I'm gonna sit and watch you do, do your thing and I may just shoot off some questions just to find okay. out more about you and your background on this, Perfect. how this came about. Perfect. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add some more broth because it's already boiling, mm, vegetable nice. broth we have here. Yes. So is this because like growing up you were like a vegetarian or something? Because there's no meat in this. Um, well, it was a healthy meal mm -hmm. and it didn't like I know meat back then, like it's more money. Mm -hmm. And so the vegetables were just less for us to go ahead and like honestly it's fulfilling the cabbage and it was just very like easy to make for me and my sister, you know, when mm -hmm. my mom was working. So Nice. And I take it your mom taught you guys this meal? She did. My mom okay. teaches us everything. <laughs> I'm like, I literally get it from my mama. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and add the onions. Go ahead. I'm learning. So, so. it can start. So I know you don't cook a lot now, right? I do not. I am a person that loves to eat out now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back then, we were definitely in the house with peanut butter jelly sandwiches, ramen noodles, mm -hmm. and... Um, but now I'm just like all four restaurants. Oh, okay, out. okay. Yeah. Now I'm gonna add the bell peppers because mm -hmm. I also want that to soak in with the other vegetables. Ooh, we got green bell peppers, red bell peppers, yellow peppers. It bell looks like peppers. it's gonna be a very colorful dish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So how long on average does this dish take? Cause... Um, I would say about all together, the whole process is about 30 minutes. It's mm -hmm. not that long. All right, okay. and it smells good so far. <laughs> so you started like real young. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, perfect. Um, you started real, real young, cause I know you from working really, really young. Oh doing yeah. Doing your music thing. Oh yeah. Always doing tours, always performing. I miss the school tours. Yeah, and you were a killer. Thank I mean, you. I'm sure the boys would Always have a heart attack when you showed up to the school. <laughs> it was the split. It was, it was the, split. the split. The second she did a split, it was like a wrap. Oh, like, yeah. People went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it she, was showtime. The second she did a split. But um, a lot of people, I feel like they don't know that side of you. They don't know how long it took before you're of the official Janina that everybody knows. Yeah, they don't because I feel like something that I kind of like messed up on was like not really incorporating my music when I got into social media because it was just all about videos. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as everyone got together, it was like, oh, what's your idea? And I kind of like put aside the music instead of combined it. Mm -hmm. And now I look back and I'm like, oh, I should have done that. But and anytime I would like go in the studio and record a song, they would be like, why are these Viners trying to do music? And it's like, you're like, oh, it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> these Viners <laughs> already did music. Oh, yeah. You just didn't know that world. So mm -hmm. it was it was hard to like intertwine both worlds once I was already established as yeah. a social media guru. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm coming back. Yeah, I am coming back. I'm going to get in the studio and start recording again because I feel like I do have such a strong passion 
with performing and just being on a stage. And so now I'm like, I got to get a team because I've done social media. I've been in it for six years now. Wow. Six and years. And it's hard work, right? Oh, my What's goodness. What's a day in the life of like an influencer? A day in the life of an influencer. So we like to stay healthy. And like mm-hmm. we also create content when we do this. Um, we work out in the mornings yeah. and then after that we go straight home get ready for shooting and then we literally shoot all day long and then we go home and we edit what we shot wow and it's like it was a repeated cycle back then when like instagram's algorithm was popping because we're like what four million views leanne was getting like 22 to yeah. 30 million views wow. and like it was so exciting back then that we wanted to like continue to create content so i always meet people that are are, are saying that always say oh i want to be an influencer young people i think i'll just be an influencer and i'm like uh i don't know i tried working out with you guys <laughs> as you know i worked out with these guys for i want to say it was like six months yeah and you within, were consistent i was consistent and it was <laughs> to say the least like first of all you have to change your diet mm-hmm. and then their workouts were Horribly brutal. It was like training for the Olympics. <laughs> I lost, I think I went in weighing like 160. And by the time I was done, I was like 127 yeah. within three months. Yeah. Your come down was insane. <laughs> and that's how hard you guys work. Oh, yeah. No, it's an everyday thing. Like, yeah. So when you see an influencer <laughs> body, just so you know, when you see an influencer body online, like, at first I used to think, okay, maybe some of them are enhanced or whatever. Yeah. But the, the amount of work that it takes to sculpt your body to oh, that yeah. level of perfection. I'm still trying to get these yeah. gains. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so tiny. But I mean, one like day. Super one perfect day. body. I'm going to go ahead yes. and add the celery and carrots okay. to the broth as well as the cabbage. So that could start to soak. Soften up for yeah, us. Yeah, make it tender and nice. Okay. Good. So on the business tip, though, you've been technically in business for yourself for a very long time on the on when it comes to being an influencer. How does the whole money play into it? Is it like you just pursue your your passion and then the money comes later or do you grind for that, too? So that's the interesting thing about it all. I've been doing social media for six years and I feel like within the last two, three years is when I just started to make my money. Okay. It would literally be like, I have 2 million followers on Instagram and I'm still not making anything. Wow. So then they came out with like ways to like monetize your content. Mm -hmm. I know YouTube has been doing that for years, but with Instagram, like you're doing, you're creating all this content and you're not getting paid unless a brand reaches out and they're like, hey, we want you to promote our product. Can you create a video or a concept about it? And that's how, like, recently I've been, like, yeah, making money. Yeah, I saw money. you did it, like, Carl's Jr. Was it Carl's Jr.? You I got did a lot. Pop Chick-fil-A? Pop. I did a lot. Yeah, within the last, like, year, um, two, year or two, yeah. I've been um, working with a lot of brands. And, like, I got a manager yeah. that plays, like, a huge role in it because she actually, like, consistently pitches me mm-hmm. to brands but before it was just it was really hard i'm like how am i gonna start making money like, yeah and you know? then doing like long shifts and then to not like so here you are you're working say i'm guessing like a 10 to 10 hour day minimum and then you're s- still not making money for the first three years yeah and then you're finally making money yeah that's crazy it's, it's insane and um i've been blessed like to work with so many brands like i did victoria's secret mm-hmm. recently maybelline oh, nice. um like okay. big brands and i'm like yeah. i'm finally working with people <laughs> i dreamed of working with yeah. so it's kind of like crazy like mm-hmm. to see like the whole process but people are like you got so much money and i'm like if only you knew i just started making money yeah and it's kind of like figuring out ways to make money. Like a lot of people don't know about monetization on like TikTok or Instagram and Facebook. Or you said algorithm and I was like, algorithm? Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. It switched up on us Mm -hmm. drastically. (laughs) We're like, where are the views? Where are the likes? Where are the people? (laughs) So are are you guys able to make money on like, say when a TikTok comes out? Like, Um, so TikTok has a creator program now where you can monetize your content. It's not like, any crazy money but you're still getting paid by like i think it's per 
how many views you get. Per thousand or something? Like CPM? A hundred thousand, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. Yeah. So um, I think you could get paid there. Facebook also monetizes your content. The, the footage has to be three minutes long, though. Mm -hmm. I think it's like that on Facebook and YouTube, or YouTube maybe 10 minutes worth of content. So it's like you have to create all this content for all these platforms and like try to figure out how you can like make a revenue, wow. you know? So it's, it's so much. It's so much to study. It's so much to do. Like people don't understand. Like, do you think it's easier for you to just do a brand than did the monetization dollars or? Um, I think I love working with brands. Like mm -hmm. it's honestly easier for me because they kind of give you a creator brief mm -hmm. and let you know what they want you to do. And it's like, okay, like I can knock that out mm -hmm. as to me being like, what do I shoot today? You know, mm -hmm. like what's going to go viral. Yeah. So it's just like, I, I, I just love working with brands in general, yeah. you know? When I'm I adding see, lemons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when you see, when you produce like your dance videos per se, like mm -hmm. a lot of them look, to me, they look very pricey, you know. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Yeah. and the, But you're the business mind and the, the person that cuts the check, right? I do it all. <laughs> see, I think a lot of people all. don't know that though. Yeah, no, I scout, I scout the talent. I go and buy the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Like I play all roles um, when it comes to like my content. Um, well, I don't shoot the video. I have a videographer yeah. who comes <laughs> and captures that, but I still have to pay him for yeah. that. You know, um, locations. I have to pay for locations. So wow. it, it's just so much that comes to shooting a video, especially the dance videos. Like when I get a bunch of girls, I have to buy all their wardrobe and wow. pay the choreographer and like. It's so much, and I don't think people realize that. So I'm like, I want the video to do good so I could, like, at least yeah. get something back. Or even if it's just support, you know? I'm like... Yeah. I think as a female, and I, I hate to do ahead. this, uh, bring up the female this. versus male thing, but I think when they see, like, people see a pretty girl, they just think, oh, it's a, it's a, it's an influencer. And a, I tell people all the time, those influencer girls are badass. Like, oh yeah, hustling. No, we are definitely hustlers, you know? And then yeah. even back then when we, we would have to attend events, like, it was always something. Mm -hmm. Like, especially my main thing is, like, staying relevant, yeah. you know? Because there's, in the influencer world, anyone can do it now. You mm -hmm. know, it's literally you start from being home, like, and having a phone, you know? Yeah. So the market has become saturated so quickly that it's like, all right, years are going by. I even get people like, she's still around, like. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, where's Janina been? And I'm like, uh, uh, on all platforms, you know, like, <laughs> working. <laughs> and you're very so, young. I'm 23. Yeah, like, that's what people don't, are like, take into consideration like you're 23 <laughs> yeah and it it's partially because i was dating an older man but i mean <laughs> it is what it is i'm gonna add more vegetable broth because this thing is getting low i love that you and storm i don't know your guys situation i'm not gonna get into it because mm -hmm. i don't want the comments to <laughs> shift to it but i love that you guys still remain very well if you guys are back together that's obviously why but yeah but Cordial. Very cordial. And you still keep the working, supportive relationship going. Oh, yeah. I mean, Storm played a major role mm -hmm. um, with my career. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the things I know, I wouldn't know if I had never met him. Yeah. You know, I learned how to edit. Yeah. I learned how to come up with ideas. Um, and his work ethic is, like, insane. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's so helpful. Mm -hmm. Like, that's one thing about that man. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um <laughs> that like you just can't like yeah. not acknowledge yeah. he has helped so many people like from uh, yeah. king batch leanne v hannah stocking and yeah. so it's always like we like thank him so much and appreciate him so much because he's played a big role in all of our careers yeah so yeah now he he also brought up the whole vine situation and that's where was that the first platform that you got on yeah, Vine was the first platform I got on because it was popping back it's then. Super popping. And it was so easy to grow on Vine because everyone was coming together and they were collaborating and everyone was just shooting videos. And before it shut down, I got to half a million followers. Yeah. And so when it shut down, we all transferred over to... Insta, right? Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe back then it was 15-second videos. Yeah, and then there's like no... 
it's starting to be like all up. It's just fascinating no, to me. Absolutely. And I, w- I want everybody to hear or see this, like to really understand. Because obviously being in L.A., you people talk about influencers like I just want to be one or or, oh, is this a hot chick or 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 maybe even fake butts or fake this. And yeah. it's just like I, I know you guys. And I'm mm-hmm. like false yeah all the way false yeah. like this girl's a badass hustler yeah we're not you know. giving enough credit <laughs> no no that's why i'm so excited to have you on the show because people need to see like you're a hundred percent entrepreneur these women are entrepreneurs they're working 10 12 hour days yeah they're the creative and the business mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which usually you don't get in business usually you're either a creative right or a business you right. guys have to manage both. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we even like we're the director, you know, like we yeah. will have a director to shoot our series, but we know what we want at the mm-hmm. end of the day. And so we're the director, the producer, the creator, like every, we play every role, but it, it's, it's, I think social media is beautiful. Yeah. And the reason why, why I say that is because it lets you be you, you mm-hmm. know, you have control of what you do. I noticed when I was in the acting world and the music world, I was always depending on someone. Mm -hmm. And like at the end of the day, if I want to be like, I want to shoot TikToks all day, I have my phone, I could do it by myself, you know? And so I like the fact that I have control of what, like my career now, you know, if I want to put out, create a business, go get people and be like, this is what we're doing, you know? So I just love that social media, like you have the ability to do that. Do you feel like social media helps boost your confidence in your own, like, uh, I guess, um, what is it like? Self, uh, like self-esteem to like do it or something? Yeah, no, definitely. Because I remember in the acting world, when you go to these auditions, you take all this time to learn their script. You go in, they ask you to read, give you some direction. And then they're like, have a good day. Mm -hmm. Then you, sometimes you don't hear back from them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just spent all this time doing this and I don't even know if I'm going to get the role. Mm -hmm. So I felt like my self-esteem back then was, starting to get low and like like almost hitting a little depression like why yeah. am I not getting anything and it, it was just a tough world and then it's like some people have bad days and then they're taking it out on you like casting directors yeah. and I'm like I'm just here <laughs> to read my roles so it's just a lot of energy in that world that I feel just was almost like I don't know a little toxic yeah. so social media you don't you don't really have to deal with that you know yeah. You deal with people and like, it's either you want to work with me or you don't, you know? But now if you were to cross over to mainstream and I've seen some of you guys, like Melvin Gregg was able to, I know mm-hmm. he came from mm-hmm. your guys squad and so he, did batch and batch. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a hindrance or there could be a hindrance going from influencer to mainstream? Um, do you think it's harder? Yeah, I do because the thing I hear the most is mainstream doesn't really take social media influencers seriously which is crazy so i'm like if you only knew these social media some social media creators actually did mainstream before but they Mm -hmm. just weren't known yeah you know like i was an actress before social media i could still read a script yeah but because i'm a influencer i'm not going to be as like taken seriously you know so it's it's definitely harder to cross over like i've tried to like get agencies and like be like oh I want to work with you guys and it's still tough like That's I'm crazy. like I have this whole platform and it's it's still hard you know yeah so it's definitely what's the hardest thing that you think in your career you face where you thought about maybe giving up or where you were like in a crossroads of like the dark side you know jumping off the cliff <laughs> you know staying on on the mountain like <laughs> right um, with social media, I don't really think I've come across that. Mm-hmm. With acting and music, I feel like I did. Again, I just feel like the energy in that world is just a little darker. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I'm going to say this, but I, you guys can take it off if you want. <laughs> I feel like there was a lot of pedophilia in oh, music yeah. and acting, you know? So it was always like, you do this for me, I do this for you, yeah. you know? Do you and think that's for both guys and girls? Because guys do get it too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. But I think that was just my thing. Yeah. That's interesting you say that. Mm-hmm. I like that you said that because nobody <laughs> ever talks about it. Yeah. No, it's it's a thing. And, yeah. like, I remember, like, I went to this um, meeting, like, this event, and I, I was so disgusted because I'm like, wow, social media is so different than this. Mm. And this guy comes over and he's like, what do you want to do? Whatever you want to do, 
I got you. I'm like, okay, like I'll pitch you my ideas. Mm -hmm. And then it like went down this path and I was like, you're nasty. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not doing that. I'm going to stick over here and be on TikTok and Instagram. So it's just, it's hard like as a woman and and, like any world, honestly, but in social media, you don't really encounter like weird people like that, you know? Because you're, you're basically taking the tools that everyone has accessible to them but you're exploiting them i would say exploiting them to grow your business or to grow Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do you think the secret to being a influencer or to having success is really being yourself or creating a character so i think it it has you have to be yourself with social media because i remember you remember when i used to Mm -hmm. wear contacts i used to wear contacts Oh, my God. Yes. And Storm at that time was like, you don't want to start social media like being this character because yeah. they're always going to want that. Yeah. You know, so it's just better to be you instead of kind of like Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana. Like, yeah. I just think it's better just to be who you are because you can always be you at yeah. the end of the day. When you're playing a character, it can become a little exhausting and everyone yeah. knows you as that character. And it's like, hey, guys, I'm actually myself. And nobody takes you serious as yourself yeah. because they know that character. Yeah. So I would say just to be you all the way. And then if you want to play characters, play characters. But don't have it be your like main focus, you know? Yeah. Do you think the secret is how much you like quantity over quality or quality over quantity? When it comes to social media, because it is competitive landscape. Um, that looks so good. <laughs> Camera above. I hope it's I wish really you could good. see this. It looks great. I'm like, should I add? Let me just throw a little more seasoning in there. Go for it. Here. Some pepper. So, do you think it's quality over quantity or quantity over quality? Um, I think it's quantity over quality. Because if you have more quantity, quantity mm-hmm. and people don't care for the quality stuff, honestly. Like when I shoot like high def videos and like the more serious stuff, they don't really relate to that because yeah. they can't really do it. Yeah. But quant- quantity, you are consistent and it's more and they know that they're going to continue to get more from you. So I definitely think, why is that like a tongue twister for me? Quantity, quantity. over quality. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to diversify, diversify, like, as in, like, all different industries? Or are you just going to stay, like, music and entertainment and influence? I'm doing everything. Okay. Yeah, now that I've, like, like, understand social media and I feel like I haven't fully mastered it, but I feel, like, very, what's going on here? (laughs) Don't start a fire. (laughs) Um, um, Now that I feel, like, more comfortable in social media, because my main thing was just uh, having money, yeah, you know, yeah. and being able to support myself and my family if need be, you know? Yeah. So now that I finally have reached that state, which is recent, yeah, <laughs> I'm able to branch out and be like, Oh, I want to do movies and like get back in the studio. Yeah. So I definitely want to accomplish all the worlds because I feel like, look at JLo and yeah. Beyonce. And so like they've tapped into every market. Yeah. And that's something I want to do for myself, too. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I definitely think and know you have the capability of doing it. Oh, yeah. I'm not Between stopping. your work ethic, your talent, and your looks, you know? <laughs> I'm let me, mama. Let me sanitize my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and your, and your, uh, your looks, hot mama. Um, yeah, you, you can definitely do it, you know? Yeah. What is like some advice that you would give to someone that like has held you through the this whole journey cuz i've seen you through i've seen you through your highs your i don't think i've ever seen you low low but i've um, seen you through i've seen you through different mountains and different chapters you know when we first met you though like even though we were performing there was still like a struggle mm-hmm. like my parents got divorced like around that time oh. and like there was just a lot of like back history, like outside of like the scenes that we were still going through. And like, I was trying to figure it out. Like, how can I start to like make money for my family? Like times are hard. And Living you were in LA young. is expensive. Oh. It's Who are you so telling? expensive. And like back then we were like, 
my family was like putting so much into my career that I'm like, I need to do something. Like, yeah. I need to pop off. Like, I need to become a star because everyone I felt at that time was like depending on my career to take off, you know? But so. do you felt like your parents, because your parents were helping you guys. Yes, were helping, yes. Mm -hmm. But you felt like as a young person, like, I need to pay back? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. yeah. And I know maybe that's not like the right way to look at it. But at that moment, I was like, I need to like. Yeah come up for my family you know yeah. and me as well like I wanted to be a star so it definitely I felt like a lot of pressure you know and like when I wouldn't get the gig and things like that it was like that's when I say like you hit like a little depression and stuff like that so wow I think this all is right it's time, it's time to eat because yeah Woo. I think it looks pretty it tender. looks done don't worry I don't mind chopping okay <laughs> I'm all right. ready to eat, guys. All right. Drum roll. There's a Drum little... Drum roll. Can I do a little, like, test out really quick? I need to see if I yeah, can have some more seasons up in here. Give me a second. <laughs> did the pandemic... Did you uh, did you survive the pandemic gracefully, or did you did you hit some rough pop Um, I feel like digital was doing great during that time. It was like, push out content. Everybody's stuck at home. Yeah, and the Black Lives Matter... Oh, yeah. What's going on at that time? And you guys did a lot. Yeah, no, we were out there protesting. Yeah, like, was it was my first, first protest, mm -hmm. and I was like, I got to get out there. Like, I was so hot. Like, yeah. I was heated and so upset with what I was seeing. And I also noticed, I'm going to say it because I'm like an open book. Yeah. Um, brands felt the need to collaborate with more black creators. Heck yeah. So I, it was definitely a more come up time. Yeah. And like that was a time where I really like started to generate revenue for myself. Oh, nice. So it's crazy. But I mean, it is what it is. Well, and I'm just curious, like, how do you feel about that? Because I noticed that during Black History Month, traditionally Black History Month has been downplayed, I think, for plenty of years. But this year was the first time I stepped into Target and I had seen like right when you walk in the door, I had mm -hmm. seen a... a display of books mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was shocked that I I was taken back like I even took a picture of it like wait a minute we're actually getting this exactly, love exactly recognition and it's mm -hmm. not in the back aisles and I remember exactly. not too long ago yeah. there was um yeah no we were definitely pushed to, to the front yeah we were and it's one of those ironic catch 22s it's like you're you're kind of like dang it took this much a lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to get this far but at the same time for the black community it's like you would have to be foolish not to like take advantage of finally being acknowledged for this type of distribution right exactly exactly camera on top look at, <laughs> look at this dish this looks like i could pay for this at a restaurant look <laughs> just so you know guys we're gonna see her cooking ability i don't know if she's single or not but here it is <laughs> Here we go. Here we and go. And I clean after I cook, so uh -huh. here we go. We're going to see because I've been cleaning after every episode. <laughs> I'm, All right. I'm definitely going to help. Chair, chair, chair. It looks Cheers. so delicious. Here we go. Oh, hot but good. It tastes great. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is a broke dish. <laughs> yeah. Taste, see, mm -hmm. being broke ain't so bad. Oh my God. No. no. I think we had the best food then, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. You ever go somewhere and like pay a lot of money for food and it come out like, yeah, like, Damn, mediocre. Yeah, that's the worst. It's Especially awful. people that get their food delivered oh, and yeah. you, you haven't tried the restaurant. That's oh my the God, worst I was so mad. <laughs> I ordered pasta from this place and I said, this is horrible. Why did they do that to me? Because they literally put a bunch of pasta on the bottom. And then chicken and vegetables on top. Like nothing was mixed together or seasoned. Oh, no. I said, they're so wrong for that. They are. That's horrible. Yo, this is really good. You do? You like yeah, it? I'm, I'm impressed with you. you uh, know? Thank you. I'm thoroughly impressed. Your little ratatouille, what's her name? Sidekick? <laughs> ratatouille. What did she say? Her <laughs> I don't even know. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, no, she was on it. She was she definitely was on, on it. For the record, she only cuts your stuff. That's it. <laughs> You get all the credit for this. Thank you. I appreciate it. But this is so good. I'm going to have to take this home. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I am mad at you. <laughs> thank you. I want to take some home, too. Well, thank you for coming. 
to and feeding me on another episode of Eating While Broke. Mm -hmm. um, check us out online or watch this video and hopefully you guys took notes on how to make this soup because it is absolutely delicious and a hundred percent healthy yes thank it is. you it is. Thank and thank you. you for being like so transparent with us yeah, thanks for having me yeah i hope you guys learned a lot on this episode <laughs>